All right, coming to you live from Austin, Texas, and KubeCon. I'm here with Paul Dull of VMware. Paul, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Mark? I'm doing well. So, first of all, what do you do at VMware? So, I lead product management for container solutions on, on vSphere. So, some of the products that fall under that are uh, vSphere integrated containers, as well as the recently announced Pivot Container Service. Cool. And so, before we, I'd like to dive into PKS, but before we do, can you sh just sketch out how the new PCF 2.0 Sure. Uh, so how it looks. Yeah, yeah. So, as uh, some of you may be aware, there was an announcement earlier this week um, at, sp at the Spring 1 conference, and uh, PCF 2.0, Pivotal Cloud Foundry 2.0, was announced. And so, there's a little bit of a change, so let me uh, sketch it out on paper yeah. here. It might make it a little bit easier. Let me take a look. So, PCF was formerly known as the PaaS offering from Pivotal, and, but it's been elevated to a, an umbrella brand. PCF. And within the umbrella, there are three pillars. And the first pillar is PAS. And PAS is the Pivotal Application Service, formerly known as PCF. Again, PCF has been elevated to an umbrella brand. Gotcha. In addition, there is PKS, the Pivotal Container Service. Yep. And then the newly announced Pivotal Function Service, PFS, which will be available later this year. Okay, cool. Yeah. And where would Bosch fit in here? So Bosch fits, Bosch is at the infrastructure layer, so Bosch is uh, providing the infrastructure deployment, day one, day two operations uh, for PAS, PKS, and, and PFS. Okay, perfect. So as I said, let's now do a double click on yep. PKS. So let's take a look at PKS. So. What we show over here is PKS uh, on vSphere infrastructure, but it's important to note that PKS is intended to be multi-cloud. Um, so you can run, uh, in addition, the first release was announced will run on vSphere and then also GCP, but you can expect over time that there will be support for other clouds. And so PKS proper is what we show inside the red rectangle over here. Got it. Uh, the main piece of it is Kubo or uh, what's now known as uh, Cloud Foundry Container Runtime. And uh, Kubo, or Cloud Foundry Container Runtime, is uh, a marriage of Kubernetes and Bosch. Uh, and this is really a, a, a great marriage of complementary technologies because, as you know, Kubernetes is really interested in, amongst other things, maintaining availability at the application layer. But it just so happens it's completely disinterested in infrastructure. Bosch, on the other hand, is all about infrastructure, and its main interest lies in making sure that you have high availability at the infrastructure layer. And so putting the two together really is a fantastic marriage of technologies. Got it. In addition, there's a component over here called the uh, GCP, or Google Cloud Platform Service Broker, mm -hmm. and this would allow developers to leverage uh, services say maybe a machine learning service or a logging service that sits on the GCP platform uh, and be able to, to use that wherever they're deploying applications on, on PKS. And then, very importantly, we put in uh, VMware NSXT. Mm -hmm. um, one of the more complex parts of Kubernetes tends to be uh, networking. Uh, there are multiple network overlays, and the visibility, monitoring, and capabilities that you get with NSXT are really vital to, to the solution. In addition, NSXT will provide micro-segmentation uh, between uh, pods, and so this is a great way to put controls around east-west traffic. So the T, what does that refer to? Uh, the T is the, the newer generation of NSX, okay. and really it's about uh, a multi-cloud version of NSX that also has support for containers. Okay. And then additionally, uh, we bring into the mix Harbor, the container registry. Uh, Harbor is VMware's number one open source project. It's an enterprise grade container registry, and so it's a great place for you to store your container images, and it provides uh, enterprise capabilities like integration with identity access management, um, and then also uh, vulnerability scanning for your images and image signing capabilities. And Beyond that, the ability to restrict the deployment of images based on you know, the scan status or the, the signature status of, of those images. Got it. And then tying this all together, we've got the, the PKS control plane. And the PKS control plane is what allows you to very quickly and easily spin up multi-tenant clusters of PKS or Kubernetes clusters. Um, in addition, it maintains things like rolling upgrades so you can be assured that you've got constant availability of your applications and really uh, is a key part of the overall package of the Pivotal Container Service. And then 
you can see, we, we show this on uh, vSphere infrastructure, you see vSphere over here, you see v, vSAN, and then off to the left we've got a number of services, uh, or tooling I should say, tools, uh, mostly vRealize, and so what we provide with PKS is custom integrations to things like VRA, vRealize Automation, VR Ops, uh, VR uh, Log Insight, Network Insight, and also Wavefront for application level monitoring. And so, uh, really, it's a, a very comprehensive solution that allows customers to uh, very easily deploy an enterprise-grade uh, Kubernetes distribution in their environment. Very cool. So, with this, then, where is it? Is it is it currently available? Will it be available later? What is the status? So, we announced initial availability uh, later this month. It will be initially available, and uh, we're excited to get it out. We have a number of customers that are really uh, chomping at the bit to get their hands on it, and so uh, we're coming out with this uh, initial availability release and providing to select customers, getting their feedback, and very rapidly incorporating that feedback into uh, future releases. Awesome. Paul Dull, thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Martin.